What's going on, boys and girls? We're going to do a really quick recipe here today. We're going to make some butternut squash fritters, and I want you guys to follow me along. This should be a fairly simple recipe with about five different ingredients, and we're going to show you what they are. All right, here's our five ingredients. We've got some about five cups of butternut squash, and I buy my butternut squash uh, already shredded, and I'm going to shred those up a little bit more. Those are spirals there. Um, two jumbo eggs. We're going to use some about two thirds of a cup of flour. This is a paleo baking flour. It's, it's grain free, but you can use regular flour too. And then we're going to use a couple of tablespoons of oil. I'm, I choose to use coconut oil. All right, those two 14 ounce containers actually made about five cups of chopped um, uh, butternut squash spiral. So um, I, I did it with a little hand processor, but you can put it in a food processor and chop them up or you could leave them spiral. But I think they'll be a little bit more manageable if you do it with a, um, a food processor or some type of processor. All right, now we're going to put two thirds of a cup of this paleo baking flour. And again, this is grain flip free. You can use regular flour too. And this is one third. And this is two thirds. We're gonna use one egg here. there and we're going to use about a tablespoon and a half of our sage and heck I thought the sage was open but the sage is not open all right so one and a half tablespoons of our rubbed sage just one and that's about it's about a half there and that's all really the ingredients that the recipe calls for, but that just, just doesn't seem like it's got any flavor to me. So I'm gonna use a little bit of house seasoning. House seasoning contains salt, pepper, garlic uh, powder, and onion powder. So I'm gonna put some of that on it as well too. Now, again, um, if you wanted to just use the sage and things like that, you could. Then we're gonna get us a spoon and we're gonna mix it all up. Egg is going to serve as a binder. The flour is going to serve as a binder as well. Go ahead and preheat your frying pan. Put you some oil in there, about medium heat. And then we're going to spoon it on. We'll finish mixing this and then we'll go back to the cooking. And heck, I wasn't going to share this with you, but I was, I'm also making some orange roughy. And I got two orange roughy slices of fish here and I'm putting some uh, Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning and some lemon pepper on this. I'm going to cook them on each side for about three minutes and uh, flip it over. Real easy recipe. I think it'll go real good with this um, butternut squash fritters. All right, so we're going to spend spoon about three tablespoons of our mixture here. And you don't want these to touch, so you want to just and I'm kind of guessing at the three tablespoons here. So you can probably get three in there safely. Now we want to mash those down. I said you didn't want them to touch, but they're touching. And we're gonna cook those for about three minutes on each side. And then with our fish, we're gonna put our, put the inside part down first. The skin side, this is the skin side here. And then we're going to add some more seasoning on this side here. 
not much, you know, this Tony Satcher can be kind of strong. And a little bit of lemon pepper. Not much, I don't want to overdo it. All right, we're gonna come back over to our fritter here and see if we can get it to flip. That looks okay. That one didn't flip too well. <laughs> but it looks good though, right? And that one didn't flip too well either. So again, it's just a, it's a, probably could have cooked them a little bit longer on the side too, guys. We'll, we'll make them look good though. Some of that fell on the side, so we won't, we'll get that later. And we also need to flip our fish. The fish shouldn't fall apart like that. Well, maybe it will. There we go. There we go here. This is a very tender fish, so you don't want to overcook it, but it's going to turn out delicious. All right, I think the main thing with these fritters is having enough oil in the pan too. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out here. You don't really want to burn them. They, they help together. I think if you use regular flour, guys, it probably would be a little bit better. But we're trying to be all healthy and junk. And we're gonna do another batch here in a second. Taste is what counts. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our fish out as well. Fish is done. Putting it on our fancy plateware here. Everybody's gotta have some fancy plateware, right? There we go. And there we go. Then once we get it all plated up, that's what we end up looking like. And the next thing is what it tastes like. I know the fish is gonna taste good. I don't know about these fritters, but at the end of the video, we'll post whether or not it was good or not. I think it's gonna be good. But enough squash is good. This is gonna taste good. Okay guys, I just wanna give you an update on the, on the uh, butternut squash fritters. They're delicious the way they were with the fish, but I think for breakfast, they'd be much better. You, I mean, they were good, cooked plain, um, but if you put some honey or some syrup on it, oh my God, they are delicious as a breakfast meal. So so use it as, as a compliment to fish or use it as something for breakfast, something you got to try. Came out good. I was kind of, I was, it didn't look good because, you know, I think when you use regular flour with this kind of stuff, um, it makes it bind a little bit better. Um, the organic flour with the coconut flour, I mean, it's, it's good, tastes good, but you know, regular flour makes it stick together. And I think it gives you a better looking appearance as well too. We'll see you next time.